Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Math. Today we're looking at the 6th grade concept of absolute value and we are going to be looking not only at its definition but also how it's used to solve mathematical problems and we'll do it in 5 minutes or less. So before we begin we need to make sure we understand what absolute value is. Absolute value is the magnitude of a number without regard to its sign. Another way to think of it is how far is that number away from zero? That's going to show you the magnitude of a number. So let's say on our number line we have this number right here. So we're starting with a very simple number line. That number is 3. So if we wanted to ask what is the absolute value of 3, it's represented by this. You write the number 3 and then you draw a straight line on either side. And that is asking, how far is that 3 away from 0? Well, that's pretty simple. It's 1, 2, 3. So the absolute value of 3 is 3. It is 3 spots away from 0. That's its magnitude. On the other hand, if we have a negative 3 over here, we're going to be asking the same thing. So let's go ahead and write our negative 3 absolute value sign. And the question is, is what is the magnitude of that negative 3? How far away is it from 0? Well, it's 1, 2, 3 away from 0. So the absolute value of 3 is also 3. So that's why it doesn't really matter what the sign is, whether it's a positive 3 or a negative 3. The absolute value of both are going to be 3 because they are 3 away from 0. And it doesn't matter on what side of the 0, positive or negative, it is. One last thing to keep in mind is that when you're dealing with absolute value in larger problems, it acts as parentheses. So let's say we wanted to simplify something like this. And so we wanted to say 7 minus 9. We want to know what is the absolute value of 7 minus 9. Well, you would go ahead and you would write, you would simplify 7 minus 9. And so that's going to be negative 2. So now you're looking for the absolute value of negative 2. And your negative 2 is right here, and that's going to be 1, 2 away. So it acts like parentheses, meaning you have to follow the order of operations, and you have to perform any operations in there before you can get to the final number and find the absolute value. Another term you will sometimes hear when you're dealing with absolute value is this term opposites. Because when you're looking at the magnitude of a number and you don't really care about its sign, you would say that negative 3 and 3 are opposites. And the reason you can say they are opposites is because they both have the exact same absolute value. If you take the absolute value of negative 3, it is equal to the absolute value of 3. They're both 3 away from 0. And it works for very large numbers as well. You can say, well, my number is 1,276. What is the opposite of 1,276? Well, we know it would be negative 1,276, simply because the absolute value of both of these very large numbers are equal. And that absolute value would be 1,276. Now it's time to see if you can answer some true-false statements about absolute value. All right, I have five statements on the screen here. Go ahead and take a moment. Answer them as either true or false. When you have your answers, you can unpause the video and check your work. The first statement is true because the absolute value of negative 36 equals 36. The second statement is false because 54 is the opposite of negative 54, not 54 hundredths. They're opposites because both of their absolute values are equal. The third statement is very long, but it's also true, because 17 minus 20, its absolute value is 3. 36 divided by 12, its absolute value is also 3. Absolute value tells you how big a number expression is. That is false. It tells you the magnitude, or how far away it is from 0. It doesn't tell you how big it is. And finally, the absolute value of 4 is negative 4. That is incorrect. The absolute value of 4 is actually 4. You could change this if you wanted to say opposite. Then you could make it true.